All right, let's get over to currencies and take a look at how the major pairs of crosses are shaping up early Asia on a Wednesday. Euro dollar single currency at 14264, dollar yen at 8146. Let's get right to uh, Mike Baghdadi, chief trader, training traders, plus our guest host, Hai Hui, regional head of research, Southeast Asia, Stan Chart. Both of them joining us around the desk here at the SGX. Mike, welcome back. Great to see you. Thank you, sir. It's a very always a pleasure to be here. Thank the you pleasure is uh, the pleasure is ours. Now you are a uh, uh, a technical uh, guru. How do you read markets right now? Uh, basically, the the way we approach the market is what we call price behavior. Uh, we use the price as the primary indicator because the price is the collective perception of everybody. So if you are have a, a point of view about something, whether it's going up or down, you will act upon your knowledge by actually going into the market and buying and selling. And by us identifying your behavior and the way you approach the market and how you buy and sell, and then we'll be able to interpret uh, the direction of the market and uh, the result. And that's how when I was on your show the last time in 2008, I, uh, we remember we that when I called for you that that was the beginning of the bear market and at that time everybody was saying no no we're still in a bull market but it was on your show right here yep yep I remember that interesting stuff yeah and if I may say something I mean it's, it's a little bit of history if I may I say 30 years ago in Singapore if you recall the great trader Richard Dennis one of the market withers he has launched the Turtle Traders, he was in Singapore with his partner and he launched the Turtle Tra Traders program. Today I am humbled and honored that in Singapore, 30 days to the day, we have also launched the Training Traders New Turtles. We are taking 20 people, we have already recruited them and we are going to repeat identically the same experiment. I gotta ask you, why do it well, again though? Yeah. What you're talking about is a program where you seed, you give these guys $100,000 US, I assume, each, right. and goes, look, here, start a hedge fund, trade. I mean, well, what's the point of doing it again, repeating this? That the idea trade. is nurture versus nature. The, the premise is that unless you're a talented trader, uh, otherwise you won't be able to uh, succeed. But uh, if you are given the proper set of rules and law uh, uh, to apply in approaching the market, then you will be able to replicate and identify the market conditions and act accordingly. Interesting. Well, let's get to a practical example of that, Mike, because the US dollar is something that even the most professional and seasoned trainers are having a tough time calling at the moment. And there's been a lot of commentary just in recent days. Has the selling been overdone? For instance, we've even had the US dollar declining against currencies such as the Romanian and the Latvian currencies. What are your calls on that? If you can possibly take a look at the charts for us, is the US dollar selling almost over? Well, uh, I believe the uh, dollar selling is almost over. You would see that the uh, the dollar has put a base around the 73 uh, handle and the dollar index, and it has bounced up from the 73 handle, and now it is testing the 76 uh, handle. And within that, within this last two weeks period, it has began to accumulate uh, against other currencies. The most notable is that you would see that the dollar yen now is trading above the 8150 level. Uh, you may, if you look at the charts, you would see that the 8112 level has been the all time historical low as of 9596. We only broke that level in uh, the beginning of this year after the, the tsunami. But the 8112 level has always been that line in the sand, and now. We have the, the dollar has been able to breach that 81 level and now it's trading at 8140. You also see that there is a break in the pound. Uh, the pound broke the 166.62 level, which is also one of the structural points that begins the liquidation into the pound. And in the euro, it broke the 147 and then the 143 levels. Mike, it's Bernie Lowe in, uh, in Hong Kong. You know, before we, uh, we brought you back onto the show uh, a bit earlier, Karen and I and then the rest of the uh, gang, they were talking about this new uh, postulate from the World Bank saying that the U.S. greenback is not going to lose its, uh, you know, 
uh, reserve currency status until the year 2025. So we're talking about 14 years out, and the presumption is then, you know, we've got a multi-currency sort of a, uh, a paradigm where the dollar is still involved in that, but then the renminbi is part of that, and then the euro has to be considered part of that, which would, you know, necessitate an, an overhaul of the global pricing system for everything from from edibles to uh, you know, hard metals, but is there anything in history or anything, you know, gazing forward that would bring us to that conclusion? Uh, I think it's going to be take a great deal of time and effort before we actually move out of the dollar. Right now, yes, the Chinese are going into the euro, but with the problems that we have in the eurozone, I think it much be more credible now or actually more attainable if they go back to the gold standard. Uh, I, I kid you not. I mean, where, uh, look at the euro with all what's happening in Europe today. As a way but, to anchor some of these currencies, indeed, Mike. <laughs> um, what I want to ask you about, too, is a report that's come out just in the past 24 hours from HSBC. This is a research note saying that we have very risk-sensitive markets out there, and traditionally it would have been the Canadian dollar that uh, would move the most. But these days, it's the Australian dollar, and as a result, it is overvalued and susceptible to a vicious decline. What do you think? Is, is the Australian dollar poised for a big drop because of the risk-sensitive nature of the currency? Uh, not particularly. The, the, the currencies today, like the Canadian and the Australian, they are more of a well-balanced budget uh, countries, currencies. They are commodity currencies, and the economies of these two countries are managed and handled quite well. And therefore, these currencies will sustain. Uh, they may have some long liquidation that would lead to a, a decline, a slight decline or a pullback in either the Aussie or the, the Canadian dollar, but these would represent buying opportunities rather than actually converting into a, a negative. All right, time's been chomping at a bit. Come in on this. Mike, um, we're looking at Asian currencies um, pretty much reaching a high since the Asia financial crisis 12, 13 years ago. I mean, are there any uh, important levels, for example, against the Sing dollar or against the Thai baht that you're looking at uh, uh, in terms of technical perspective? The, more of the Sing dollar is around the 1.2 now. That's the, that's the level. This is where it's at. A more focus primarily on the uh, European and the Asian uh, uh, and the, uh, the majors. Okay. Listen, Mike, we I really wish you had more time. We'll do it again very soon, I hope. Uh, my the pleasure is all mine. Thank and, you very uh, much. As it's ours, always a pleasure to Ours as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you very uh, much. Mike Baghdadi there from Training Traders. And more to come with Ty Hui, our guest host from Stanchart. Questions for him, email us at squawk at cnbcasia.com.